We have to figure out how to make this at home. And I have to say, she knocks it out of the park so far on this one. This is a really, really cool place. No, we wanted something that, again, was both unique to Berlin, but also was a meal that we for sure were not going to leave that place hungry. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Ashton. I'm Jonathan. And along with our son Jack, we're the Black Forest family. With about 5 million visitors per year, Berlin is the third largest tourist destination in Europe after London and Paris. And while many of those visitors will go to iconic landmarks such as the Berlin Wall, the Brandenburg Gate, or their Berliner Fernsehturm, Berlin has also become a hotspot for those seeking to broaden their culinary experiences as well. Yes, absolutely. Berlin now has the highest number of Michelin star restaurants here in Germany. And you know, the city whose famed contributions to cuisine were once limited to currywurst and the doner kebab now boasts one of the world's most interesting, diverse, and quality food scenes. The choice of restaurants in Berlin is greater than ever before. But we're the Black Forest family. We don't like making typical videos, so this is not gonna be your typical food tour. No, because in visiting Berlin and the different food trucks, food stands, food markets, and fine dining restaurants, well, the story of these dishes goes far beyond the menu. From the oldest restaurants in Berlin to relatively new dining hotspots, each of the five places we are sharing with you today not only illustrate the diversity of food available in Berlin, but help tell the fascinating story of a city at the heart of our new home country. So without further delay, let's dive into the modern history of Berlin, as told via food. Let's get started. Okay, so after a long day of driving, we were a little bit hungry, to say the least. <laughs> As you've probably noticed by now, we're fairly active people. We are terrible at sitting down, and I think our drive was like eight or nine hours or something. But anyway, we were happy to get out of the car, do some walking, and then of course, some eating. One of the first things that we noticed when we entered the city of Berlin was just the prolific amount of Asian restaurants available. Interestingly, the North Vietnamese moved to the former East Berlin because of their government's association with the Soviet Union, while the South Vietnamese arrived in the West. On either side of the Berlin Wall, both groups worked alongside other immigrants to help Germans rebuild the city following the Second World War. And if you're in the mood for some delicious Vietnamese food, to be quite honest, there is no better place that you can visit than the Dong Xuan Center. But this place is also known as Little Hanoi. So I have spent some time living in Taiwan and traveling in Taiwan for work, and I realize that is definitely not Vietnam, and that's what this place is mostly about. But I am getting some vibes of the night markets in Taiwan, which had food stands and clothes to buy and other various items. Everything looks so good. I don't know how we're going to decide. All of these photographs look... Yeah, they look amazing. <laughs> You know, you'd think after like working in Asia for as much as I have, I would have better etiquette than this. I'm not actually sure if I'm supposed to eat these with chopsticks or not. Or which end you Or with. which, <laughs> I'm just gonna use my fingers. So I'm sorry for everybody that I might be offending, but I'm gonna go with this other end. Oh, super, super good. That's a really nice taste. I am always a sucker for summer rolls just because of how fresh they taste when it's kind of like a warm day like it was here, having something that's just like crispy and cold and filled with vegetables, uh, but still the taste you get with the sauce all mixed together with some shrimps on the inside, fantastic. My favorite is always the mint leaves that they put inside of a spring roll. <laughs> it's always so fresh. Mm. 
To be completely honest with you, I have been so looking forward to this. I absolutely love duck and Asian dishes. This is something that I always go to whenever I'm traveling for work. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, that's fantastic. One of the things I love about duck is it, it is a bit oily, but the crust is so crispy. The meat is juicy. The noodles are also slightly crispy because they're grilled. Um, it is just such a delight to eat. Oh, it's a, I'm gonna be devouring this tonight. It's really good. So when I was ordering this dish, I actually asked the waiter what was his favorite pho, but it's really, really fresh. And honestly, I think that's what surprised me the most about eating here at this market. I mean, obviously they probably get all of their ingredients from right here within the local market hall. So like it really tastes like the spring onions are fresh, the herbs are fresh. It's not expensive. And considering the quality of the food, the quality of the ingredients and the freshness of the ingredients, this really needs to be on your list of places to try when you're here in Berlin. And you know, honestly, one of the things that I loved too about this place was just how wonderful of like a people watching situation it was because this is clearly a very popular destination within the city. Yeah, it is extremely diverse. The tram that we were on on the way there was just absolutely loaded with people <laughs> yeah. of all walks of life that all got out to go to this event. Here in Germany, I would not necessarily say that American donuts are popular. However, you can find them, particularly at a new shop that opened up here in Freiburg about one or two years ago. Yes, however, uh, a more traditional variety, which doesn't have the iconic hole in the center, is actually associated with a delicious pastry from Berlin called, well, fittingly, the Berliner. I know, I know, it seems a bit obvious, but we are not gonna visit Berlin without actually trying a food that carries its namesake. Now, exactly how the Berliner came about is not 100% clear, but legend has it that in 1756, a baker invented the fried pastry in Berlin out of gratitude. The baker is reported to have served on Frederick the Great's military service as a mobile baker, where he shaped little dough balls that were to resemble cannonballs. And because he didn't have an oven to bake them, he fried them. Thankfully today, you don't have to wander onto a battlefield to enjoy a good Berliner. You can actually find them just about anywhere. And we found a wonderful example of them at the U-Bahn station at the Alexanderplatz. Now this isn't our first Berliner. Um, although I do find it interesting that in Berlin, these are not called Berliners. Uh, they're Pfannkuchen mit Frucht. Yes. So. <laughs> Did not know that before know. we came here. No, but I will say that a Berliner is pretty much the closest German pastry to an American donut. Yeah, I'd say so. Now, as we mentioned in the video, in Berlin, they're not called a Berliner. They're called a Pfannkuchen. They became known as Berliner Pfannkuchen when they spread across Germany and other parts of Europe in the 19th century. But over time, this was shortened to Berliner. And of course, Germany wouldn't be Germany without being delightfully confusing. People will look at you weird if you don't order them as a Kropfen in some parts of Southern Germany. And if you want to order one at say Frankfurt airport, you might have to ask for a Krepel. But interestingly, this dish is actually found around the world. And typically the name for a Berliner found in other countries is going to have some reference to either the city or the country. In Ontario, Canada, as well as parts of the Midwest and West United States, where we are from, they may also be referred to as Bismarck's. And this of course is a direct reference to the 19th century German chancellor, Otto von Bismarck. I think for me growing up, this was just a jelly donut. No, honestly, no, 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 not for me though. No, at our- Really? Yeah, no, seriously, if at, in, in Springfield, Illinois, if you ever find yourself there, um, no, like, if you go to a donut shop, they're for sure called Bismarck's. It's very sophisticated. I don't give us that much credit. <laughs> so let's give it a try. For the sake of science, let's eat some sugar. Okay. Why did you get the one with all the- Well, I filling? gave you the bigger piece though. It's just how my wife feels about me. <laughs> I get the piece with... But it's a... bigger. Anyway, let's give this a shot. <laughs> okay, cheers. Uh-huh. Mmm. 
Tastes about the same. Mm -hmm. Really soft, light grab. Strawberry filling. I, had to, I can't taste the filling because I don't have any filling on mine. <laughs> like most German pastries compared to the United States donut, it is much softer and it's much lighter. Mm. It's not as heavy. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Okay. Okay, but I will say, I don't know, it is a little bit more bread-like. It's not as like doughy as an American donut can be. No. No, it's like more cooked, but it's really good. And it's very sugary. Very sugary. Yeah. Jack, do you want to try? Try it. It's good. Try it. Nine? Okay, well, yeah. more, more for me. Okay, okay, you didn't think we were actually gonna go all the way to Berlin and not try a currywurst. But you know, if I had to give some comparative experience here, for me, currywurst in Germany is a heck of a lot like ordering a hot dog in the United States. It's a fairly inexpensive food, and no matter what city you visit across the country, you're probably going to find a street food stand selling it on some street corner somewhere. Yeah, it's still kind of a staple item in some situations. Yeah. But to be honest, I would always found this food specialty to be somewhat of an oddity. I mean, when foreigners like me imagine German food, well, curry powder isn't a typical spice that would be associated with it. But the story of Currywurst not only has its origins in Berlin, but also is a wonderful illustration of post-war history and how the universal need for food can bind individuals and groups together. In 1949, the story goes that a resourceful German housewife, Hertha Heuwe, traded some spirits with British soldiers for ketchup. The trade created the dish composed of German sausage or Wurst, sliced and doused in ketchup and sprinkled with curry powder. At first, it maintained this function as a substitute for a poor man's steak, but soon it extended beyond the proletarian palate and became a popular meal amongst Berliners of all social spheres, including former chancellors Angela Merkel and Gerhard Schröder. Now, some tourists will swear by Curry 36 and East Berliners by Knopke's Imbus. Yes, but we were also told by a local Berliner that the best place to get currywurst in the city, hands down, is actually found at the Currybaude, located in the Gesundbrunnen. So today we have two dishes we wanted to try. The first is, of course, currywurst, although the owner of the restaurant said that he recommended we try the spicy version. And then we also have a Kartoffelpuffer mint applesauce. So yeah, it looks delicious. I can't wait to try it. You know, this is a little bit different, I think, than the currywurst we've had in Freiburg. Normally the currywurst in Freiburg, it's like a grilled sausage and then they just add some sauce on top of. This almost feels like it's a fried sausage. And it has a nice crispy texture on the outside. I really like it. That is really good. No, the skin is actually a little bit harder, I guess, than we normally are used to. Um, and the sausage is a little bit bigger than I've had in the past. The sauce is almost a little bit tangy and actually pretty sweet, which is pretty similar to what we're used to eating. But overall, that tastes good. And I think one of the other interesting points to call out here with this dish is this place specifically has their own butcher where they get their own meat to make this, which is one of the reasons why it might have a different taste than what you're used to eating here in Germany. You know, if somebody had told me that they would put applesauce on hash browns, I would think you were crazy, but it, it's really good. And it, it is, it's like a hash brown pancake, but sweet, really delicious. Highly recommend. You know, Ashton, I think you're totally right. I'm used to having something like this that's really savory, but it's actually sweet. I think I like it. Oh. It's good, right? It's really good. And guys, this was such a treat to visit, especially when you consider that this is a food institution that has been around for over 30 years. The stand is actually still run today by the same owner trained butcher Rainer Lehmann, 
who makes the sausage according to his own recipe. And the sauce is also self-made and the preparation remains a family secret. And with so much heart and soul for the Berliners and their beloved currywurst, it is hardly surprising that the Currybauda has developed a loyal clientele that you can see queuing up at the snack bar on Badstrasse from 6 a.m. until midnight. For our last day in Berlin, we wanted to make the most of it. So we woke up bright and early for our breakfast that we have been seeing every day <laughs> of our entire trip. Yes, but we weren't in the mood for just any breakfast. No, we wanted something that, again, was both unique to Berlin, but also was a meal that we for sure were not going to leave that place hungry. Yep. You know, coming as a surprise to many international visitors, Berlin actually has the largest Turkish community outside of Turkey, with most residing in Kreuzberg, Neukölln, and Wedding, after having come to the city in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s as part of a post-war employment treaty called Gastarbeiter, or guest worker. Today, the term guest worker is no longer used or even accurate as the people who initially came to Germany for work have either returned to their home countries or become German citizens. And the majority of Turkish citizens who came to Germany and its capital during this post-war labor era have since found and built homes, bringing their cuisine, culture, and identity, which make Berlin the special place that it is today. So while I'm sure many of you <laughs> were hoping that we would opt for the traditional donor kebab, we wanted to go with something a bit more unique. So we headed over to La Femme, a Turkish breakfast house founded in 2004 as a small bakery in Berlin. All right, so the first thing we have here is a semit. This is basically just a sesame coated round bagel. From what I understand, I could be a little bit wrong there, but it is super soft. Jack has been eyeing it like crazy. It breaks apart like a bagel, maybe a little bit harder. Let's see what it tastes like. Mmm, very much like a sesame seed coated bagel. Mmm but I think this would be really good to wash down with some Turkish black tea. So we did also order what the waiter recommended. Free tasty. So now, if you know me, I'm the one with the sweet tooth in our family. So I also made sure that we ordered some baklava and some Turkish coffee, which according to the menu has cocoa and cardamom in it. Um, it looks Oh, and it smells almost like Christmas. It's the only way else to describe it. It smells fantastic. That's so interesting because it's actually not that sweet. It's almost like a bitter chocolate note, which like is a dark chocolate? kind of like a dark chocolate. But yeah, it's not like a, like when I go to Starbucks and order a mocha and it's really sweet, it's not like that at all. It's much more like a spiced bitter note. Really, really good. And of course, the baklava. <laughs> you can't go wrong with pistachios and honey. It's just, it's super good. Oh, I haven't had this in so long. Mm. One of my favorite dishes, for sure. Ah, super. Dankeschön. <laughs> okay, to be completely honest with you guys, I have been eyeing this since we got to Berlin. This restaurant is like right next to our hotel, so we just keep walking up and down the sidewalk and I am a sucker for egg dishes, especially if there's a little bit of meat mixed in. And I didn't know exactly what it was. Yeah, it's basically just eggs with Turkish bacon. It's kind of like an unmixed scramble. Holy moly. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no. The Turkish bacon is actually the best part in this. It's super juicy and has a really strong taste. But with the eggs, it's, we have to figure out how to make this at home, right? Mm -hmm. Like the meat. I don't know what that is. I don't there, know. No, there's spices in there that are really good. I've never had a meat like that, especially with mm -hmm. eggs. 
This breakfast blew away our expectations and then some. Oh, yeah. It is by no surprise that this place is completely packed from when it opens until it closes. And guys, honestly, the food, the smells, the atmosphere, everything about this place is just simply divine. It was one of the best breakfasts that I've ever had. And I am a massive breakfast fan. It is my favorite meal of the day and I left completely satisfied. Yeah, there's definitely something for everybody on this menu. And yeah, it's a place I highly recommend you check out if you're in Benin. Yeah, and it's actually really cheap. All of this food that we got was like 20 bucks, like completely affordable for what you're getting. It's a really good value. Now, as a final stop of our food tour through <laughs> Berlin, we wanted to give a nod to the traditional German food and some of the best examples of it that you can find in the city. Yeah, while Berlin is definitely a multicultural, international city, we also live in the south of Germany and thoroughly enjoy getting to taste and try other regional dishes from around the country. So of course, there were a lot of different restaurants that we could have chosen for this grand finale of our episode, but we wanted to choose one that had the best balance of delicious food, but also a story of the city. So we settled upon Zur Letzten Instanz, which is not only the oldest restaurant in Berlin, but is also just steps away from the famous Alexanderplatz. According to legend, the name of the restaurant goes back to a violent legal dispute that two farmers had in the nearby court on Littenstrasse, and which only found a peaceful end here at this restaurant after a few good drinks. Unfortunately, like most of Berlin, the building was badly damaged in World War II and only reopened in 1963 after extensive reconstruction. Today, the restaurant is owned by Anya, who's the daughter of the owners, and her brother, who's the cook. Her parents actually bought the restaurant after the fall of the Berlin Wall, because the restaurant is located in the former Soviet sector of the city. After the fall, people were once again allowed to own businesses, as before that moment, the government owned everything in East Berlin. So Ashton is usually the one that does all the research for the restaurants we go to, and I'm just kind of here along for the ride, and I get to eat good food. And I have to say, she knocks it out of the park so far on this one. This is a really, really cool place. Okay, so for an appetizer tonight, it was recommended that we give this onion tart tartin a try. It's essentially a pastry with a caramelized red onion in the center that's then paired with a local cheese. It's a little bit savory, a little bit sweet, and like I said, as told by the waiter, it's one of the specialties here at this restaurant, and you're supposed to sort of combine them in ways that suit your individual taste. If you like it a little bit more sweet, or if you like it a little bit more savory, you can take a little bit more or less of each of the individual ingredients. The presentation is spectacular. Really looking forward to this. That's one of the best things I've eaten in a long time. That's, Jonathan, you have to try it. It's so good. Oh, it's super yeah. flaky. Mm -hmm. oh, super flaky. Oh man. <laughs> Jack is excited. Yeah. Oh, you, you can smell the caramelized onion too. Ashen is totally right. The combination of the cheese with the caramelized onion and this flaky pastry together is just divine. Oh, that's so good. It almost just gives me a hint of like fall and Thanksgiving as we're going in, just with these different tastes, but with its own, I don't know. It's really pretty indescribable how good this is. I'm so happy we ordered this. Oh my gosh, okay. So I think now we're gonna eat the rest of this in just a matter of minutes. Okay, so I went for the meatballs and mashed potatoes and it looks absolutely divine. I can't wait to give this a try. The mashed potatoes are actually slightly green because there's some parsley mixed in with them and then it's served with some capers and what looks like maybe either 
I don't know if it's apple or if these are caramelized bread. It just it looks really, really yummy. Cheers. This reminds me a lot of my grandmother's cooking. Really warm, hearty, great spices, but really kind of comforting food. Delicious, and especially in a cold October night like tonight, I think this was the right call. So I ordered what the waiter recommended, liver. And I would consider myself normally a pretty adventurous eater. I eat pretty much anything, as you've probably seen in some other videos. So I was more than willing to take this one on. And I'm really excited to see what this tastes like. That is really, really good. It is super tender. You bite into it, like basically my tongue can just cut right through it. I would normally not order this on my own, but you can usually not go wrong asking the waiter, what is the house specialty? What do they recommend? And I have to say, he did not disappoint with this dish. Yeah, for me, this restaurant was super, super interesting simply because of all of the history that you can see of this building and this business that is just plastered all over the walls, yeah. all the way through. It was really cool. You know, honestly too, this is a place that definitely feels like a local family restaurant. It had so much charm, so much history, but it also felt incredibly intimate. It's super cozy. Yeah, and the staff, by the way, fabulous. They welcomed you the second you walked in the door. They had wonderful recommendations on food. And to be quite honest, they were also extremely gracious of the fact that we arrived with a two-year-old who, by the end of this trip was he pretty was, done. <laughs> he was basically done with our food tour. Yeah. So yeah, they were very kind at making him feel at home and letting us still enjoy our dinner. And you know, at the same time too, I also feel very thankful that we were even able to get reservations at this restaurant. Oh yeah, all of the poor people that came in knocking on the door asking for a seat that were turned away. If you wanna to come to this place, book a table several days out because this place is completely packed. Yes, and for the American viewers, if you happen to be watching this video and you're not familiar with making a reservation in Germany, unlike the US, in Germany it's very common that you'll either be given a reservation for the table for the night at some restaurants, or they'll specifically tell you that you have the table for a block of time. Yeah, they're not gonna give you your receipt with your very last bite that you have. Yeah. You have the table reserved for a certain amount of time. Yes, and at this restaurant specifically, we actually were given a two hour block of time. Which, Which for Jack, <laughs> absolutely plenty. Yeah. <laughs> Time to spare with him. Yeah, but if I have to say, the food that we had at the restaurant, the drinks we had at the restaurant, it felt homemade. Like it felt like I was sitting down at some wonderful German Oma's house and eating not just like traditional food, but locally sourced ingredients and dishes that were prepared with a lot of love and thought behind them. Yeah, like the dish I ordered is not something I would typically order at a restaurant, but it came with very high recommendations by our waiter with a nice wine paired with it. I'm an adventurous eater. I gave it a shot. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, overall, great restaurant. Highly recommend. Go there. Yeah just a great way to end out our trip. I couldn't have really have planned a better ending. Yeah, it was, definitely. It was quite perfect. And before we let you go, yes, we do have a question for you. And if you have been to Berlin, what restaurant did you visit and what food did you have that you would recommend for us to try? Yeah, I don't think this is gonna be the last time we go to Berlin and we greatly appreciate your recommendations for the next time around. We are always willing to go back to places to consume more food for the sake <laughs> of science and for accurate reporting. Exactly. But you know, if you've never been to Berlin before, we'd also love to hear from you. What are the foods that you saw us try piqued your interest the most? Again, let us know down in the comment section below. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So until next time. Ciao. Cheers.